Hello, I'm Nayeli. So the first video we went over how to create a simple form using Wix code. And I actually had a request from somebody saying that they wanted to see how the user can edit that information after they've submitted their profile on the Wix code form that was created. So I'm gonna show you a different website actually. Here's the website, and this one is basically a listing of different cycling, running groups, multi-sports groups uh, for the local community in South Texas. Um, in the group section, there's an add a group button. In order to access this particular form, it is actually set to members only. So nobody can access this unless they've actually signed up. Um, this little corner right here has a little um, icon of a person, people, a little icon for notifications, and a profile pic. Uh, that's because I'm already signed in. I accidentally clicked on the icon. One sec. <laughs> Let me go back to add a group. You're welcome to visit the page and you're welcome to, to sign up as a member. It is free and it is auto approved. Um, so that way you can kind of browse this form and check it out. Um, so here's the add a group form that I created. I added some quick instructions up at the top. Notice how I've already designed it. Um, and this is where they start adding the information. What we did not cover in the other video is this form actually has a drop down menu. There's different uh, options here that they can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and pretend I'm going to add a running group and I'm going to give it any name. And here are little check marks to check the location of the group. So where they normally run or get together. I'm going to go ahead and put Mission and McAllen area. The second part of the form, um, the user can actually add any type of URL, um, either to their website, their Facebook profile, an online store. Maybe they sell merchandise for the group that helps the group. Um, or maybe they have um, like member like outfits, a specific uniform that they have to wear when they're running, things like that. Um, also the donate or pay. They can also upload a profile picture. Um, in this case, I'm going to add a random picture. Once it uploads, it will show the name so that way you know it, it is there. I added a little note. Um, I'm not going to add any of these since they're not required. The profile picture is required for me to continue. And the group description, this is where the group description is typed out. This one is required as well, so I am filling in and out. The third and final step is to select what type of group they are. Is it free to join? Are there membership fees due? Or is it something else, other? So I'll just go ahead and put other. Uh, I also put a little note box saying private note to the web admin, any special notes, requests, things like that, they go right there. Um, I do have a little check box right here so that way they confirm that all the information is true and correct and then they can go ahead and submit it. So after it's submitting, since it has a, a photo, it does take a few seconds to go through, um, we'll be able to view the Thank you for your submission. Your profile page is complete. So it is successful. I did go through. Now I'm going to go view the groups. I'm going to start searching. Now this is the, the group, the main page for the group. They can learn more so they can learn about how the profiles work, what they can do. They can view all the profiles, they can search by group type or add a group. Um, essentially these buttons, they just take them to the another page 
on the website. There are some FAQs that I did write down, which is important to know because I did um, have specific settings. Um, how long does it take for the group to appear on the website? Um, your group will appear instantly. Basically, as soon as they submit the form, it's already in the database. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to approve it. It's just already there. Um, how can it be updated or deleted? This is what we're going to go over right now. Um, I have the permission set to only the author that created the data can edit it. So that's why I had to create a, a group right now because I'm going to show you how to edit it or else I cannot go through the other groups and attempt to edit those because I didn't create those. You can read the other FAQs later if you'd like. Let's go find the new profile group that I just created. I'm going to go to view by group type. In this page, I did something a little bit different. Instead of putting like two or three buttons to take me to the group page that I want to search through, I actually made it into a gallery form. Uh, notice how when you hover over it changes color. I did this because basically I only have three groups. I have cycling, running, and multi-sport. Um, it would have looked really plain if it was just three little buttons. I'm sure I could have come up with a different design for it, but this looks, you know, pretty neat. It, it, it's a full width uh, Wix Pro Gallery, so it, it will, um, you know, get bigger or smaller according to the screen size, so I like it. Um, let's find the profile that I created. We made a running group. So let's go there. In this page, um, there is a collections, a data collections. It is not a dynamic page. It's a regular page. All I did was add a data collection in a list form. In this list form, um, you actually have to go in and set the settings. So that way, if you hover over the picture, or the group name, or the member type, et cetera, et cetera, you can either choose to link it uh, to an external uh, URL or to another page inside of your website. So if I click here, I actually set the settings so that way it'll take me to that specific profile. I'm kind of rethinking this yellow that I did up here, so that might change pretty soon. But here's the profile page. Um, when I set up this dynamic page, I chose to have a unique URL, which means every single time I click on a different profile, the name will change up here, which is really great because if, let's say, this group, my group, didn't have their own website, um, they could essentially make a profile, uh, go into the form, add a new profile, uh, wait for it to submit, upload, and then go back in, find their profile on this my website, and use this personalized URL to use as their website for their group. Um, it won't change. It'll always stay their name, unless, of course, they change the name of their group. So. This is all the information I submitted. It was very little information, but it's it's good to work with, so that way we can edit it now. Um, the name, the about, the type. I have a few buttons down here at the very bottom of the page. One says edit profile, one says delete profile, and one says save changes. Um, these two buttons are set to different uh, settings. Let me show you the editor. This button is connected to the action uh, to revert. It will be if if I click it, it'll basically tell this page I'm going to make some changes, and then I'm going to I'm going to change it to a cycling group. Um. I want to add some more information. Add some more information here in this box. And then I'm done. 
then I'm going to save. So after it saves it, it says successful. It went through. Now let's test it to see if it did go through. Okay, so I'm back in the search page. Let's click on running. Voila, there's nothing there. <laughs> Let me go back. Now let's try to find Nayeli group in the cycling group area. And voila, there it is. Let me click on the picture. It'll take me to the group profile page. The URL stayed the same. The list where it was located changed because I changed the group type. It already added the new information that I had written in before. And that's it. If I were to click this little button, it would delete the entire page and it, that um, collection or that, that piece of information for this whole group would be gone. It's I put here deletion cannot be reversed because it's it's gone. Once it's deleted, it's gone. Um, let me go to the editor and show you how. So we had created a form. I showed you how to create a form. I created this page as a dynamic page. The reason I did not connect it to regular text is because these uh, input elements can be used the very first time they're um, entering the information in the form and they can also be used to edit information the way we saw before. So as long as all, this, all these elements are connected to a data group and somewhere on the page you have a button that's connected to this and you have a button that actually saves the information then your little profile page, your dynamic page, I connected it to submit so that way it submits it again. It overrides the old information that was there and saves the new information. This button for delete, I connected it through the database. There's the data set right there that we went over in the first video. And I connected it to the action delete. So it does delete it in case somebody wants to delete it. On, let me see if I can show you the permissions. On the data set permissions on here, I have it set to read and write because I want them to update info. On the database itself, if you look down here, Edit permissions. I know you may not see because it's a little bit cut off. I have a, a custom permission on my database down here for the groups to add the group. Um, who can read it? Anyone. Um, if you're not a member, you can search through all the groups and you can view all the profiles that are there. You don't have to sign up as a member. Who can create the content? Only a site member. This is only to protect the information. I want to know who's the person actually submitting the info and not just any uh, random person that lands on the page. Who can update it? Only the site member author, which means if you created it, you can update it. If you didn't, you can click that little edit button as many times as you want. It won't do anything. Um, and who can delete it? The person that created it can delete it. Of course, you as the owner of the website, you can go into your live database and delete anything you want. But as far as who can natively delete it and edit it here in your website, it's just that. The author, the member of that created that piece of information. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know. Um, if you didn't watch the first video, just uh, search through my YouTube channel and uh, you can check it out there. You can also find me on Facebook and message me. I'll include my email address um, in this 
little video, the description on it. Um, if not, you can contact us here. This goes to me. It's my website anyway. Thank you.